Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, realagriculture.com. And again, here at Diagnostic Days, Ridgetown Campus, University of Guelph, the strip till plots, but wow, we learned so much. So we have different treatments here. We have fall strip till. We have fall strip till followed by a spring refresh. We have no till, and we also have conventional, which is chisel plow. One of the interesting notes, Scott J planted this plot. Scott has worked here at the college forever. He actually retired last year. He's back helping Albert Tenuta because trust me, Albert needs all the help he can get doing these plots. There's just no question about that. Scott's a gem. He planted this, so we had these plots for diagnostic day. He said these were the toughest planting conditions in his entire career. And he hated doing it, but the rain was coming, so guess what? Plot people are just like farmers. They gotta do things when things have to get done. It's just the way that it works. So what did we learn here? So cool. So you can see that we have residue here in front of me, right? And where the residue is, a little bit of what we call consultant damage. We've been digging plants in here for the people coming through diagnostic days. And, and so there's fewer plants that you can see, but there was a whole bunch of plants here, but they're small, they're stunted, they're ugly. And then as soon as you get past the residue, we get back here, all of a sudden we're in the no-till plot and the no-till corn looks absolutely fine. What is going on? Well, you know what's going on. The residue, this is a little bit lower area. It's wheat residue. The water came down here, carried the residue with it, left the residue behind. What does residue do for you? She's wet, she's cold, she's ugly to plant into and the plants don't grow very well. So residue is the enemy. Light a match to it. Wait just a minute. For years now, for the last couple of years, what have we talked about? Soil health, residue, we need cover crops, we need organic matter, we need soil biology. So absolutely, we need the residue, but the residue on a wet spring really fights against us. So it's a great example of the challenge to do the right thing for the soil and still grow a good crop. And of course, that's what we're trying to do with strip till, but it absolutely did not work for everybody this year. She's been a challenging year and, and you know, the conventional tillage, it looks the best. And yet when you really look at it, boy, there's a lot of plant to plant variability there as well. It's far from perfect. So what else did we learn? Well, one of the cool things that we learned is just in terms of the plant setting the crown. So you know that we've talked lots that the plant sets the crown, the nodal roots, doesn't matter if it's wheat, it's barley, it's oats, it's corn, where does it set it? Always three quarters of an inch in the ground. Why does it do that? It's because when the coleoptile senses red light, then that tells it to set the crown. And normally it senses that red light before it emerges, kind of in that three quarter of an inch range. And so that's why we get the crown three quarters of an inch in the ground. And we can actually predict seed depth based on that measurement and then the mesocotyl measurement. This year, guess what? We have corn plants. In my no-till treatment, soil surface, seed depth, crown right above the seed. That is two and three quarter inches deep that crown. What? That can't happen, baby. She's always three quarters of an inch. Oh, wait a minute. It's when it senses red light. Slots open. We didn't get the slot to close. Guess what? The light goes down the trench. Soon as that seed germinated, coleoptile came out, set the crown in the ground. It really is one of those few times when we can prove to you that it's light that sets that crown depth. Really neat stuff. The other thing, and oh my gosh, you know, we talk about root growth. Well, look at this, because we got a plant here slotted in to beat heck, and we talk about nodal root development, and, and yeah, it's, it's ha uh, tomahawk roots or hatchet roots were really in that, in that slot, but notice that that root is pushing way down, and that root is flattened right out. It's not cylindrical, but look at it push, and here's a root, and it's a little bit dried up, 
but that root actually came, found a little bit of a, of a fracture in the soil and made a 90 degree corner and started growing between those soil blocks. So just some tremendous, amazing how much power those corn roots have trying to push through that soil. Just really neat stuff. So tough spring, yep. It's a real thought process of how we manage residue, we build soil health, and we still grow good crops. But what a learning experience. So I had a grower ask me today, is it a year to forget or a year to remember? To me, it's a year to learn. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, grow great corn.